Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six of Kids Deserve It. We hope you've been enjoying our weekly chats with educators and game changers from around the country. This week, we have another amazing guest, one of our favorites. Um, but first, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. My name is Todd Nesloni, and I'm the principal lead learner at Webb Elementary in Navasota, Texas. I am Adam Welcome, elementary school principal at Monterre Elementary in Danville, California, broadcasting from my car tonight because my family's at dinner. I'm going to join them once we are done with Sine Bell. Sine, introduce yourself. Hello, hello. I am Sine Bell. I'm an elementary principal from Katy, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston. And I'm so glad to be here tonight. Woo-hoo. Hey, everyone, don't forget to uh, participate in the chat and also use the Kids Deserve It hashtag when you're tweeting out. Uh, and uh, we will respond to you. Our guests always like to respond to the tweets kind of after the show. So uh, look for those responses then. And we want to thank everybody for watching last week with Angela Myers. Um, we loved hearing uh, all what you thought about it and all the great things that you were doing with her challenge that you shared with the Kids Deserve It hashtag. So, Sine, we have a few c- questions for you, and Todd is going to kick it off. All right. So for those of us who don't really know who you are, I- I- tell us all about yourself in about a minute or less. Okay. Well, I, as I stated, I live in Houston, Texas. I'm an elementary principal. My background, though, is a secondary person. Um, I was a middle school teacher and assistant principal, a high school teacher and a high school basketball coach. And this is my fifth year as a principal of Cimarron Elementary School. So I have that K-12 experience and um, absolutely have grown so much from having that. Um, I enjoy leadership, I enjoy people, and building relationships with teachers, students, and community. I love that K-12 experience. That's really rare, really, really rare, but that's great. Uh, what, what's something you've done recently that you feel is really innovative or just pushes the way things haven't been done in the past? Something that you're really proud of, Sine? I would have to say, um, really, that question is a hard question because you got to dig deep. And initially, I was going to say, you know, I completed my doctorate degree, but that was just a challenge of myself, um, my will and my determination. But I have to say, in keeping with that K-12 experience, going from a secondary administrator, secondary teacher to an elementary principal, honestly, when people think of words like innovative, they think of something just off the charts, super amazing. That was a huge learning curve for me. And so just myself out there and being vulnerable and knowing that I was going to need other people to help me with that helped me to grow as, as a leader in just uh, so many ways. And so some of the innovative things that I've been able to do are all because of me being able to say, hey, I'm not really sure how to do that. Let me go find somebody to help me with that. Let me find somebody in my PLN to ask questions and, and to grow and taking what they taught me and taking my experience from K-12 and put, putting that together and making something, you know, making it my own. So I would have to say, I mean, nothing extraordinary or off the charts. It's just pure knowing my limitations, pushing myself and then finding other people to help stretch me and to challenge myself and to make me better. I love that. That's I love cool. that. You got to reach out to your people. We're better together. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, Sine, what do you feel is one of the biggest challenges that you face working with educators and kids now? I think knowing it's, this is the best time to be an educator, I think, because there's so many challenges that we have. But the beauty and the challenges that we're faced is what you can is kind of going through that iron and coming out even better and sharper. But I think the big challenge is not taking hold of every new idea that's out there, everything that we hear or read about on Twitter or what someone's blogging about. It's knowing your school, knowing your community, knowing your students and knowing the needs that they have and how you can take what what's out there and make it your own. And so it's that sense of urgency, not about I'm going to just run on and do the next biggest and best thing, but how do you sustain the good things and how do you make what what your community needs make it a part of who you are so that it becomes not some fad but it becomes something that you've always done and no matter when the principal leaves it's good stuff and it's not something that the principal did who was here before but this is something that's great for kids and so we're going to sustain that and so i just think that's the the biggest challenge in in 
I think that creates burnout when you're chasing the next biggest and best thing. And it's not about what's the biggest and best and what another school is doing. It's about what your students think in your classroom. And your students are Todd, she is preaching. You know, I call it TMI, Sine, too many initiatives. And I'd rather do a few things really well than too many things with mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you hear things on Twitter, on Voxer, and you just think, like, that wouldn't work for my people right now. And uh, I, I really love that you say that. I do too. You know, <clears throat> some, of our best, some of our best success comes out of failure. And what's something that you have failed at, you know, and that you've turned around and said, I I'm going to learn from this and just grown from that experience? You know, then, and that's a part of success. A lot of times people, they see the, the end result and they're like, man, that's got to be so easy. And that's chasing that next best thing. And so I would have to say a setback that I had was when I became a principal, I was so excited. I mean, that first principalship, you're just gung ho, pumped up. And I had a whole lot of ideas. And when I was an assistant principal, assistant principal for six years, this is my 11th year in administration. And so I really had all these ideas and I would keep a file that said, when I become a principal file, it was all these things that I was, you know, <laughs> things that I learned from my principal or some things that, you know, I'm like, I think I would do this differently. And so when I finally got that seat, anybody that's ever sat in it, it's the buck stops with you and you are essentially, you're alone. And it's like, it's all of them. And then it's the principal. And so um, I think for me, it's like, man, I'm ready to get going. I have these ideas. And in my mind, I was like, we can roll. We can do this. That's just kind of how I work and operate. But when you're leading an organization and you're getting to learn a culture and you're trying to build relationships with people, you have to move slow sometimes to go fast. You have to set that foundation on solid, solid foundation before you can start to do some innovation. And so... What I learned, and I wrote an article about this, um, when I become a principal file, is that sometimes you got to stop, you got to ask questions, you have to build the foundation and build the capacity before you can just start running off. Because you can think you're leading and you turn around and there's no one behind you. And so uh, what I learned from that, I don't take for granted that my staff, they follow me and they choose to follow me. And I really appreciate that. And and I, I'm humbled by that because, you know, they could say, I don't know where she's going and I'm not doing that. But they choose to, to go along with me on the ride. And so um, I learned that it takes time to build culture and takes time to build capacity. But that's very important when you're leading people. I mean, God, today you just got so many quotable moments in here. It's such so many. I, I appreciate all you shared all this. So what advice would you have for others who may be uh, facing adversity right now with what they're doing? Well, you know, as I mentioned, I'm a former coach. And so um, I love stories of the underdog. I love sports stories. This uh, weekend, my husband and I, we were just sitting watching Rocky, Rocky Four, with the Russian. And man, I was just getting pumped up. I'm not a boxer or anything like that. But it was pumping me up that he was working so hard that – it looked like the odds were stacked against him. I mean, that dude was big. He was pumping some steroids. He was messed up in the head. But Rocky still persevered and worked hard. And so I'm a big believer in hard work does pay off. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean that it's always going to happen fast. But when you start something, you got to finish it. And right. You need to be strong. And so that would be my advice to anyone who's listening. Like, whatever you start – Put your mind to it and finish it. And I don't care if you're the sweeper in the daggone school. You better sweep those floors like it's the the, the last sweeping job you're going to have on earth because yep. put, put it in. Put the work in. Do it. So that that would be what I would have to say. Start start strong. Finish strong. I love that. Never never stop. Love it. Uh, Sine, every week we like our guests to leave a challenge for our viewers. What? Is your challenge for Kids Deserve It viewers this week? Well, you know, Adam, if I was prepared, I would have had my hula hoop. <laughs> yeah, bring I would have been ready. But what I have to say, you know, we have about three more weeks before we get on a break again for the holidays. And so I don't know about you guys, but this first semester has been amazingly fast. Yes. And sometimes things go so fast that we don't take the time to reflect on where we've been and where we are up until this point. So. My first challenge is take the time to reflect this week on what did you say you were going to do this year to make this year great? What, what 
what initiatives, what I always have personal goals and things um, that I want to that I want to achieve. I ask my staff to do this constantly. They probably get sick of me and my reflective questions. But I think that's really important because otherwise you sometimes you can just be spinning your wheels. And unless we take the time to reflect and take back our profession and not make test scores on the, the reason why we go to school, I, you know, I think we got to reflect incrementally to see if we're making progress along the way. So that would be one challenge. And then the second challenge would be every day for the next 15 days is what we have before our break. Wake up and think about who you're going to serve that day. You're going to serve kids. You're going to serve students. And you better go in and go all in. Leave it all on the court. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Make it the best 15 days of the semester. And um, just know the power that we have and what we do by impacting the lives of students and, and for leaders, teachers every day. And so either go big or go home. I Try. love those challenges. I think they are perfect. They are timely and something that everybody can do. So we hope that all of you do those challenges this week and share out your progress with that using the kids. We would also like to say, you know, Sine recently wrote a guest blog post for our Kids Deserve It website. So if you'd like to hear some more from Sine, you can go and read her blog post. Um, it is called Elevate Your Why, and you can find it on kidsdeserveit.com. So thank you, Sine, so much for being our guest this week. I've appreciated hearing a little bit from you and, and getting some great advice. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Shout out to Cimarron Elementary and Katie Is. Woohoo! Thank you, Sine. Have a great week, everyone. All right, take care. Bye. All right. Bye.